What is it about cracking necks that's so, ugh, disturbing? Maybe it's because the neck is a pretty sensitive area for most people. Or maybe it's that sickly sound effect that comes with the cracking of, you know, bones. Whatever. Or maybe I'm just oversensitive. Anyway, for as impactful of a moment as good old mummy Ganondorf's neck crack was, newer fans of the series will be surprised to hear that he wasn't the first one to make a snap crackle pop with his head holder. Oh no. Let me take you back to a villain from what is undoubtedly one of the best games in a series of games where each one is arguably one of the best. Except for these guys. Twilight Princess introduced the world to the villainy of the villainous villain that goes by the name of Zant. Like Ant with a Z. At the end of the game, oh, uh, major spoiler alert by the way, even though the game came out over 10 years ago. <clears throat> At the end of the game, when Link and Zelda defeat Ganondorf quote unquote once and for all, Ganondorf calls once again upon the divine prank, the power of the Triforce of power that rests within him. He holds his hand in the air, awaiting the surge of renewed strength that will enable him to cheat his impending death as he experienced once before. But to his dismay, instead what he then sees is Zant, who died a little while ago. He just stares at him for a few seconds and then... And immediately Ganondorf's life escapes his body and he dies, standing straight up with the Master Sword stabbed through his bod. For as legendary of a scene as that was, it's also incredibly confusing. What did the Zant head thing mean? Why did he even show up here? What does he have to do with Ganondorf or the power of the Triforce? In the same kind of style as I've done with one of my previous videos explaining that haunting Lanayru cutscene also from this game, I'm going to explain what you just saw. And because what I'm gonna say isn't confirmed to be canon. This is what we call a theory. A Zelda theory. Let's begin. Actually, real quick guys, before getting into the nitty gritty of this theory, make sure you're not just at the mercy of the YouTube algorithm, but are subscribed to the channel with that bell icon so you never miss out on an upload here at MNB. And of course, after you're done watching, leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Any whoosies, I'm going to begin by just straight up telling you what I think the whole scene represents. I think Ganondorf's Triforce hand shine is more like a request for power, and Zant's neck snap is the denial of said request. Now, in order to explain explain that hypothesis, first we're going to talk about the significance of this entire moment here with Zant's neck doing the crack thing and G-Man straight up getting deleted. I wanted to point out that this scene is so impactful because it's happened to Ganondorf before. You see, after the events of the child ending of Ocarina of Time, Ganondorf is tried for his crimes and straight up sentenced to death. Death by stabbing, that is, through the belly. Seem familiar? And that's not the only similarity. Not only was he stabbed in the exact same spot that Link stabs him in at the end of the game, but when he's dying, the Triforce emblem on his hand begins to glow with the power of the goddesses, saving him from his otherwise certain death. The inability for even the sages to explain why Ganondorf was one of the chosen to bear the power of the gods is referred to as the infamous divine prank, and ultimately took them so off guard and resulted in Ganondorf killing the Sage of Water. But let's rewind and break this scene down to better understand what happens with Zant at the end of the game. So first up, we have Ganondorf death, or near death. He's mortally wounded, bleeding out, moments away from meeting his makers. At the last moment, his hand begins to glow. Was it glowing before, when he was chained up, or when he initially got stabbed? Nope, it was not. And once it does begin to glow, Ganondorf's strength not only returns, but multiplies in force. But what happened to make his Triforce, the divine prank, come to fruition? Why didn't it, oh, I don't know, prevent him from getting stabbed in the first place? Well, simply put, I think this gives us some hint as to how exactly Ganondorf's piece of the Triforce works. Think of it as a switch that isn't turned on all the time, but rather a switch that Ganondorf has to call upon when needed and can access upon his intent or upon his request. Maybe he actually didn't activate this power prior to being stabbed because he didn't even know he could do this. At this point, almost kicking the bucket, his thoughts became something like, I want to live. And this request went through and he was granted the power to not only dodge his own death, but also literally break the physical chains holding him back from defeating his shiny enemies. So who approved this request exactly? Did the goddesses themselves see the Demon King dying and go, oh, oh, oh wait a second, I want that guy to live. Have you seen this rehydrated fan art? I don't think so. I think the goddesses had nothing to do with it actually. And that since Ganondorf's power lies within himself at the moment, he approved
approved his own request at the moment. Now, the very astute of you watching this and paying attention to every word that I'm saying already probably know where I'm going with this theory. But stay tuned, I'm about to start drawing connections. Right after G-Man deletes Water Guy, he gets catapulted into Twilight Place. Sometime between this event and the events surrounding the game's ending, G-Man meets with Zantman, who immediately reveres the floating Ganondorf head as a god. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Ganondorf saw potential for his master plan in Mr. Zant, which led him to make a mistake that would, unbeknownst to him, lead to his eventual, actual death at the hands of a certain farmer boy. Ganondorf tells Zant that he will house his power in Zant, granting him the ability to do things like curse Midna into being an adorable flying imp, break the Mirror of Twilight, and pass in between the World of Light and the World of Twilight at will. Oh, and also survive being in the Light World when the Twilight normally cannot. Which, by the way, is a pretty good segue into a neat theory on Midna and the Triforce of Wisdom I did a while back. Link will be in the description below and on the top right if you want to check that out. Anyway, on Ganondorf's side of things, he gave Zant part of his power in order to have a powerful pawn capable of paving the way to his eventual retaking of Hyrule Castle. The same goal he had originally in Ocarina of Time. He didn't care about Zant necessarily, and never shows any sort of remorse over the little guy's death at the hands of a pretty ticked imp lady. But, okay, why am I going over all this? Well, now that these pieces have been set, let's look once more at the events of Ganondorf's death. In the climactic ending of this epic four-part final battle, Link and Ganondorf literally spar against each other in a legendary one-on-one -on -one sword fight to the death while Zelda watches from beyond the magically enhanced barriers. After X farmer guy finally knocks G-Man to the ground and stabs him through the gut with the Master Sword, the fight has officially ended. Ganondorf stands, vows this is not the end, then makes the same request for power he learned from long ago, at which point Zant randomly shows up, cracks his neck to the side, and Ganondorf's life fades away. When I first saw this scene, the only thing that made sense for Ganondorf dying here as opposed to earlier in the game was that it was the Master Sword that prevented Ganondorf's survival. But if the sword seals away evil, why would it prevent the flow of the power of the Triforce, regardless of the bearer? I mean, are we trying to say that the Master Sword is more powerful than the Triforce itself? No. I think the answer has to do with the fact that Ganondorf is not the only bearer of the Triforce of Power at this point in time. You heard me. Remember when Ganondorf gave part of his power to Zant? Consider this. What if Ganondorf no longer had enough power within himself to revive himself alone? I mean, he had expended quite a bit of power in encasing the castle in a magic barrier, possessing Zelda, transforming into Dark Beast Ganon, creating ghostly enemies, and even affecting the weather, and erecting more mini impenetrable barriers and so much more. It's entirely possible that he spent all of the power he had left housed within himself while fighting Link, and this time, when he requested more power, the request went to where the remainder of his power lied, in Zant. Zant has been dead this whole time, watching over his quote-unquote god as he witnessed the complete lack of concern over his own death, and his own people, and his god's defeat at the hands of some boy. I think it's safe to say that Zant's faith in this false god was not only tested but was lost entirely. And when this god that was supposed to be all-powerful and was supposed to give him eternal reign over the twilight instead reached out to him to save his dying life, the pathetic request was denied. And that is my theory on what Zant's cracking neck meant at the end of Twilight Princess. It's partially symbolic and partially literal. But what do you think? Am I on the right track or completely crazy? Let me know in a comment below. And hey, thank you guys so very much for watching. As always, humongous thanks goes to all of my many supporters, including some big new faces. Say hello to Selena, Omega Navios, Jake, Zach, Din's Flame, and Patrick. And a massive hello to a brand new mega supporter, Candy Skulls. You guys, I am so humbled and so amazed that so many of you want to support the channel. I can't thank you enough. Enjoy your benefits and welcome to my elite crew. If you watching would like to see your name up here at the end of my videos and some exclusive perks, click the join button below or visit the links in the description. Also down there are links to my social media pages, so come follow me on Twitter. That's all I've got for this one. So as always, this is Mass Nintendo Bandit signing out. I hope everyone stays safe and has a wonderful rest of your day. Peace!